Uh, Coach, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Thank y'all. You've been around. I hate to do this to you. I, I, I want to. I don't want to age you off the top, but you've been around football for, I'd guess, more than fifty years, Coach. Um, is, is twenty nineteen? Is is that what you chase? Did you believe twenty nineteen even existed? Could that happen as, as a coach? As long as you've been in a player, as long as you've been around the game. Um. Well, I tell you, it was exciting. That's for darn sure. And 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 no, I did not. Uh, did I expect us to be good? Yes. Uh, did I expect us to be that good? Uh, I'm not sure anybody did. I'll be honest with you. But uh, I, I haven't seen anything like it. You know, it kind of, be honest with you, kind of all just fell together. You know, it's uh, it was a perfect storm. You know, with um, you look at the the year before and, uh, and and us changing offense, and everything else. But you look the year before and you know, we we were decent on offense and everything else, but you know, you didn't have a Thad Moss. You really uh, the development uh, that our our receiver coaches did with Jamar Chase and Terrace Marshall uh, this past year. The um, like I said, Thad Moss. Uh, how much better Joe Joe got? Uh, uh, Clyde Edwards. You know, uh, uh, I mean, it was just it was a perfect storm. Every, every, everything came together, and we stayed healthy, and and it was just. Uh, it was fun to watch. I mean, heck, you get, you get to call a play, and, and when you call a play, you never know what's going to happen, but you had players that who were going to make plays, and uh, hell, I got excited up in the box when, when I watched it. Coach, was there a moment where you said, okay, this offense is different? Because I think a lot of us point to third and 17 at Texas. You're on the road. You're not conservative there. You go for it, and you go for the first down, and then you pick up a touchdown. Can you remember – that moment when you called that play saying, hey, you know what? I trust my offense. We're not going to just run the ball and punt here. Uh, I, I remember it vividly. I, I'll be honest. That, that play we called was uh, uh, we had called five times during the course of that game. The only thing I did, and I, I knew as soon as, uh, uh, as soon as it went to third and 17, I knew what play we were going to call. Uh, we were going to call four verts uh, with, with benders on it. And uh, the only thing I did uh, is I changed protection. You know, we're, we're a five-man protection team. I there was no doubt in my mind he was going to blitz us, so I changed to a six-man protection, which left Clyde back, uh, left him in to, to, to pass protect, and he picked up the linebacker right there. Joe, Joe escaped it right there and, and moved to his left and threw the touchdown pass. And uh, uh, I remember, <laughs> look, I, I watched that play uh, uh, more more than once. Don't get me wrong, but I knew we was going to call. I knew I didn't know we were going to score a touchdown on it, but <laughs> I was very I was very confident. That uh that it was the right play to call, it was the right protection to call, and uh, but you know what we went into the season, I you know it was just a different group. It was a very mature group of kids, and uh, in the first meeting we had going into that season, you know uh, I told them, hey, we're gonna win the games. Uh, we're not we're not uh, taking our foot off the pedal. We're, we're not gonna back off and let our special teams win it, our defense win everything else. We're going out there. We're going to be full full throttle, and we're going to win the football games. And 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 hell, if I don't call that play, or, or, or if we don't make that play, whatever, our offense still knew. Hey, we were going to win the football game, and I think they believed in it. Absolutely, the slinger Steve Ensminger, LSU offensive coordinator, joining us here off the bench, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. There is a story around LSU football now that has become almost like a legend, uh, like a, a fable of Joe Burrow's official visit a couple of years back when he came down from Ohio. He didn't want to see the facility. He didn't want to see the uniforms. He didn't want to see the locker rooms. He just wanted to talk about football, and you guys locked into a room for about four hours. Coach O tells a story that there was five people in the room. The smartest one was Joe Burrow, but really the conversation was all between you and him. What was that meeting like, and did you know that Burrow was going to be as special as he was when you first met him? I, I did not know that, I'll be honest with you, but I do remember the meeting, and I do remember, look, uh, that that was a long meeting, and, and, and to be honest with you, I can't take credit for all of it. Uh, 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 hell, I can't talk that long. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 but there was there was a bunch of us in there. There was myself, there was Joe Brady, there was some, some GAs in there who was working with computers, there was some analysts in there and everything else, and we threw everything at him, and, and – uh, you, you know the, the the fun part of recruiting, uh, really. You, you get to meet the parents, you get to meet the family, and everything else. But the fun part of recruiting, uh, with any position coach, but especially for a quarterback, when they want to sit in a meeting 
and all they want to do is football, and I, I, all they want to do is just uh, uh, absorb, uh, hey, how are you going to make me better and everything else? That, 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 that's really good. I, I've only done it, to be honest with you, a couple times in my life. I, I remember recruiting a young man, uh, and I won't even bring it up, but uh, back in the day, back in the uh, early 90s or whatever, it was uh, – uh, you know, we, we had all the academic people around, and and uh, we would call out and say, okay, who's who's uh, who wants to go into business? Who wants to go into education? Who wants to go into marketing? Who wants to go into engineering? And all the recruits and the families would file out and go with the academic advisors and uh, and the professors and everything else. And there was one person left, and there was a quarterback. He said, I'm here for football. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I said, hey, you with me, let's go. And uh, and you know, when, when that happens, you know you have a special young man. I'll put my money on Eric Zier in that uh, in that story. There. Hell, you, nice, you. <laughs> nice. Uh, Coach uh, Coach Steve Insminger is joining us here on Off the Bench. All right, so now the 2020 edition, right? Because everybody is swept up in 2019, and, and the fan base and everybody around the program it, it will never forget that. And you guys never will as coaches. But it's your task to get the 2020 edition ready for competition. Um, it, it, how difficult is that, and what are your thoughts on this team as they started the early preparation? I, I, I like our enthusiasm. Uh, you know, we only had three days of spring practice. Um, I, I, I like where we're at. You know, you, I, I wish I could say – I wish we could be talking right now after 15 days of spring practice, to be honest with you. You know, when you lose mm-hmm. uh, probably eight guys on offense that are all going to play pro football, uh, you 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 need the repetition. You need you need those guys who are taking Sadiq Charles place, who's taking a D. Lewis place, who's taking uh, Lloyd Christianberry, who's taking the new tight end, who's taking Je- Justin Jefferson's place, Joe Burrow and Clyde Edwards. Mm-hmm. And so you know you 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 you, 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 you I remember two years ago when we were th- I think we were talking I know we were uh, about spring football and I, I said hell I don't know who our center is I don't know who our quarterback is I don't know who our running back is and, well right now there's eight positions that that uh, that we have to answer right now, and and don't get me wrong, uh, uh, I think we're a very talented team, I, and I think they're very capable. Uh, but you can't; um, those guys need the reps. Those guys mm-hmm. need the repetition, everything else, to be good. So, but I'm excited about. It. I really am. I I, I hate to say this. Uh, that's the reason I don't do interviews. I hate to say this in public. It's like a, I challenge our guys. I say, you know, hey. Uh, probably the best offense uh, we've ever had here at LSU, and you know what? It's your job to break all those records. Hmm. And so, uh, so, so let's get started. Let let let's compete. And I, I talk to our players every week, and uh, and so you know, I'm looking forward to it. You know, there's there's a lot of unanswered questions, but there's a lot of excitement from me because I think we're a very talented team. Coach, one of those guys that's going to be very difficult to replace is Clyde edwards Lair because he did so many great things for this offense a year ago. He was on on 93% of the offensive plays. But having a guy like Kevin Falk now as the running back coach with those young running backs, is that one of the competitions that you're looking forward to? Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm so excited about Kevin Falk being here. Of course, he's been here, and he's uh, he's done a great job in everything he, we've asked him to do. But uh, – his knowledge of the game, his knowledge that he's given to these running backs is uh, you can't replace. And uh, off the bench with, but, but 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 I do believe this. You know, it's kind of like hey, Clyde was our guy last year. Uh, uh, kind of like two years ago, I, I was saying I think we're very talented running back. I think uh, uh, Ty Davis, I think John, and I think Chris are, are very talented players. Uh, you know, we we have to put them in the right position to make plays and. Uh, 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 there, there's not a Clyde there that, hey, hey, this guy is the guy, and he's going to play 93% of the plays and everything else. And, and I've told our running backs, and I've told Coach Falk, hey, these three guys are our starters, okay? There's, there's not right. one guy that, that we're going to, hey, hey, you're going to take every play and everything else. Hey, there's a role for every one of them, and we have to do a great job as a coaching staff to put them in position who's in there uh, and what play we're going to call uh, to make them successful. Uh, you and Joe Brady worked dynamically together last season. Uh, he's moved on to Carolina. Scott Linehan comes in in this offseason. What's been the early return in working with the new passing game coordinator and Coach Linehan? It's been really good. You know, uh, 
uh, you know, a, a Scott's come in and, and I, I said, okay, here, here's your role. Here's what Joe did and everything else. And Joe kind of, uh, I, I love Joe Brady. I promise you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he was such a humble person and, and he took his role and, and he ran with it and everything else. But, you know, Joe was in charge of our third down, uh, uh, every one of our third down calls, third and three or, or plus. Uh, Joe was in charge of our tight zone, some of our red zone, everything else, in charge of our passing game. Uh, you know, we, I think we have a pretty good passing game right now. And, and Scott has come in and he, we've watched everything we can watch. Uh, some of the things that, that, that he likes, some of the things that uh, uh, he, he's brought some new plays to us. And uh, so it's uh, Scott, Scott understands that, you know, we have really uh, gone through every third down that we could go through. And, and Scott has done it and he's added some stuff to us. Uh, and we have, he has added some stuff into our red zone, into our tight zone. So, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I keep watching plays where uh, he was at Detroit and he was at Dallas and everything else. And so I'm excited about it. I, I think he's going to bring a lot to the table. We've expanded our offense uh, with it, with this passing system and everything else. So what we've done was pretty good. And, and what Scott brings to the table, I, I think is going to make us a little bit better. I really do. Coach, when I was with the Chargers, I would follow LaDainian Thomason around like a little puppy. Everywhere he went, I was trying to learn as much as I could for him. You know, for those two years, I, I was with him with the Chargers. I ask you that because Miles Brennan was with Joe Burrow, and every time that I saw those two, they were talking about ball. They were watching tape, and they were going over a game plan. Miles growing up and watching Joe Burrow every single day last year, I've got to imagine that's something that was fun to see and going to help him in this year. I think it's the best thing that happened to Miles. You know, uh, it's probably a big transition for him. A guy comes in and competes against a guy kind of, uh, takes his place where, where he was expecting to start and everything else. But Miles, is, I, I'm just telling you, I think he's a special kid. Uh, in, in any other place in this country uh, or any other kid in this country would have been, would have been gone. Hmm. Would have, right. They'd have transferred. But, but, but he wanted to be a Tiger. He wanted to be a quarterback at LSU and everything else. Uh, but the best thing that happened to him was sitting in a room and, and watching film with Joe and studying Joe and, and talking to Joe and everything else, I saw the difference in Miles Brennan in three practices this spring wow. uh, that I have not seen uh, uh, since he's been here. Yeah, and he's more focused. He he understands what it takes to be a great quarterback, and I think Joe taught him that. And uh, and, and I think he's ready for it. You know, he's uh, he's done everything we've asked him to do. You know, it's uh, we, we check on our players and we zoom our players every day. Miles Brennan right now at 216 pounds. You know, hmm. he's added weight on. He's uh, he's more comfortable in the pocket. You know, I I I took every play he had last year and uh, made a cut up of it and went through it and, and it was a good and bad tape. Hey, things he did good and things he did bad. And I'll be honest, we didn't play him very much, but I'm saying his efficiency uh, on the plays he was in there was above 90 percent. And I think he's gonna I think he's gonna be better this year. I'm excited to see him run this offense. How big of an advantage was it for you and the staff to have Max and TJ, TJ Finley and Max Johnson in for bowl prep to make sure those guys got the extra work there? Oh, it was really, really good. I, I tell you what, you know, we don't, uh, we only had three days of spring practice, but we have a chance uh, during the course of spring after, after the game of uh, we might have had 10 practices that we can go out there, we can go out there without a ball. Uh, but as far as running our plays, and, you know, uh, and them going through their progression reads and them going through, uh, hey, checking protections and, uh, and checking the runs and everything else, uh, it, it, it's really good. And, and the ability right now for us to Zoom, which I don't know a damn thing about, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, 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 and, and, we, and we have a chance to sit with our quarterbacks every morning and we, we, kind, we kind of treated this, uh, this off period, as you would say, as a spring practice. We went back. The first day we said, okay, this, here's install number one, and we watched film on it. Here's install number two. You know, uh, we went through about 14 installs. Uh, yesterday we went through some red zone and tight zone stuff. Uh, the day before we went through some end-of-game scenarios as far as, uh, you know, killing the ball, taking the shot at the end zone, what we're going to do. Uh, every situation that we could go through, we've gone through it for the last three weeks. And, uh, you know, with them sitting there, and they're answering the questions. Hey, here's the film right there. What would you do right here? I'd check the protection right here. I, I would uh, I, I would throw the run tag right here. So them getting this every day is really good. Nothing 
Nothing can take the place of the actual rep and the actual uh, game speed. But them being here and learning this offense and everything else, I, I, I'm so impressed with them, and I'm so excited about what uh, – they're ahead of the curve right now, and I'm excited about that. You're great with the media. You should do this more often. Um, I, I, I could ask you uh, four hours' worth of questions. I can tell you his answer to that one. Yeah, no, I already know it. Um, <laughs> I, I, can, I can see him gritting his teeth. Wanting to, wanting to get at me, but you, you maybe have the best wide receiver in the country. You do have the best wide receiver in the country. You may, have the, you may have the best tandem in the country again with Terrace Marshall there. After that, there seems to be a lot of competition in that room. Talk to us about what Mickey has uh, in that wide receiver group. I'm excited about that group. I, I, I'm going to tell you what, uh, you know, with Jamar coming back, with Terrace coming back, uh, there's a lot of things we can do. I think Racy McMath, uh, is going to be a great receiver next year. There's no doubt in my mind. And the guys that I'm looking to, to come on is, uh, you know, Dre Jenkins, uh, or Trey Palmer. Um, and and I, I tell you this, I, uh, heck, I hate to, that's the reason I don't do interviews is because <laughs> hey, I get excited about it is, you know, uh, our three freshmen coming in, yeah. Corey Moore and, and, and Alex and uh, the, the booty kids, those guys can run. Yeah. And, you know, uh, if they come in and shape and everything else, you you're really looking at uh, with Racy and Jamar and, and Terrence and Dre and Trey and these three guys, extra guys that we added, uh, we might have more speed on the field at wide receiver than we had last year. Hmm. And Eric Gilbert's scary, Coach. Yeah. Yes, he is. You know, uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, Eric didn't have a chance to go through spring because they hurt his shoulder during a, a all-star game or whatever. But, you know, all you got to do is watch the film and you uh, – you know, our tight end position, again, our tight end position, the thing we have to do as a coaching staff, just like running backs, uh, putting them guys in, in a perfect scenario with, Jam- with Jamal Pettigrew, who I think was coming into his own before he got hurt during the spring. And Tory Porter's a great blocker and has great hands. And you got Aaron Moffitt. But you talk about Eric Gilbert, who, who can stretch the field. You talk about Cole Taylor, who can do the same thing. So, you know, uh, it's not like we substitute a lot, but when we – when we start the series, we have to have the right tailback. We have to have the right tight end on the field. So what we want to do is during that series right there. So I'm looking forward to seeing Eric. Like I said, I've seen him on film. I've seen him live in person in high school. I can't wait till he gets on the field. Coach, real quick, I caught up with Jason Campbell yesterday, the former quarterback, obviously, at Auburn. He couldn't say enough nice things about you. Said you were the Swiss Army knife of that Auburn staff back in the day and told me to tell you hello. And if I don't do it now, I forget. Well, I'm gonna tell you, Jason Campbell was a, was a special person too. I, I'm gonna tell you, he's uh, he was a lot like Joe Burrow in the fact that hey, his last year there, uh, he took it to heart and he, and that and he controlled the offense and he's a first round draft pick and everything else. But he's a special person that you know I can think through the 38 or 39 years I've coached, I can't even remember now. But uh, you know the number of quarterbacks who uh, who wanted to be special and he was one of them. Coach, last one. We'll get you out of here. We appreciate your time. From a recruiting standpoint, it seems like every major quarterback in the country now is paying attention to the message that you guys are selling at LSU. How much from a recruiting standpoint did last year help and from the message on the trail that people are paying attention to what's going on in Baton Rouge? Well, uh, you know, uh, just like you said, every, every quarterback around, uh, you know, when you talk to them, whether in California, whether they're in New York, whatever, has watched the Tigers play, you know, and uh, – I uh, was excited about uh, what our offense was putting up. was excited about a Joe Burrow. Uh, uh, I'm going to have a chance uh, hopefully next week to uh, – uh, I'll talk to every one of them, to Zoom every one of them, and, uh, and, and, and show them a highlight tape. And you know what? After, after the National Championship game, it, it's funny because uh, the whole state of Louisiana had a chance to celebrate. You know, we, we got home on a Wednesday, and we left on a Thursday to go to the White House. We spent uh, uh, Friday at the White House, and then we went uh, – we had a parade on Saturday, went to the PMAC, which was outstanding. And then, uh, heck, Sunday we got on the road recruiting, you know. So uh, I told my wife, hey, we, we need to celebrate this sooner or later, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell Miss Amy and the crew hello. And uh, thank you so much for jumping on with us this morning, Coach. I know you don't like to do this and you don't do this regularly. It's a big day for the program and it's going to be a big weekend for the program. And uh, we appreciate you sharing a couple of minutes with us. No, thank you all. And, and I'm looking forward to uh, to watching the draft, and uh, I'll be honest, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to watch the draft. You know, my we just moved in, into my house, and 
and for whatever reason, Cox can't come out to May 6th. So uh, <laughs> I, mean, I don't have a damn TV. All right. so, so, so I'm, I'm about to find somebody who will let me in their house to watch the darn draft. Cox, if you're listening. <laughs> The LSU offensive coordinator yeah. needs your services. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on, on all the success. Tell Junior that, uh, that we're thinking about him and praying for him always. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all so much. Take care. Thanks, you Coach. Guys, there he is, the, uh, the slinger, Coach Steve Ensminger, uh, joining us here on Off the Bench.